Hello everyone and welcome back. So for today's sketch session, I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that has been on my mind for quite a while now. And it's also something I get a lot of questions about, especially over on Instagram. And that topic is how do I stay motivated to persevere through the really difficult parts about being an artist? Not just as a full-time artist, like the fact that this is my career, but how do I continue to motivate myself to improve beyond that? I think it's something that a lot of artists can relate to because almost all of us, as far as I can guess, uh, are on a path to improve. But we all hit roadblocks along the way, whether it's because our, our personal lives get really busy or chaotic and, you know, we have trouble devoting enough time to being better, to improving our art. Or perhaps we've gotten to a level with our art and we just have no idea how to progress. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I feel like I am progressing at such a snail's pace. <laughs> um, and one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give that I received myself one time is to, if you ever feel like your progress is going at such a slow pace that you just can't stand it, um, do something completely different. Uh, if you usually use watercolor or something, you might try oil paint or even graphite sticks, something very different than you're used to. Or you could take it a step further and you could try sculpting or jewelry making or, I mean, there's so many different things out there. But the main reason for that is because it gets you outside of your own head. In addition, a lot of times when we use a new medium, we see things much differently. We see scale and perspective and even color in a whole new way. And sometimes it takes a lot of internal thinking through how to use a new medium that slowly seeps into all the other things we like doing. Something you learn doesn't just apply to one single thing. So while you're sculpting, you might be improving your ability to see in a three-dimensional way, and that directly applies to drawing. You see me drawing these buildings here, and as I'm doing this, I'm trying to really strongly visualize them, what they looked like in 3D, in person. That's a skill in itself. And I know this is a challenge for those of us who are more single-minded. For instance, I just love drawing and painting. I don't really want to devote my a lot of time to learning a whole new medium, but even just dabbling in something else, it could be as simple as knitting on the couch while you're watching TV at the end of the night, you know, something like that. Very, do it in a very relaxed way. Because in my experience, the more we obsess about the things that we're struggling with, the more likely we are to let it beat us. <laughs> and that could mean that, you know, it's beating us into thinking we're not good enough, that we'll never be able to achieve it. You know, we get kind of stuck in place, like our feet are stuck in a puddle of molasses. <laughs> and I know firsthand that frustration can lead to burnout. It can lead to feeling like I'm totally unworthy. Um, a lot of really negative thoughts that take away the joy of the experience. One of the more obvious things that we can do to stay motivated to improving our art is to learn from someone who we admire. A couple years ago, I was at a point where I had done as much as I could in the way of self-teaching. So I had watched tons of free videos on YouTube, I had read a bunch of books, I had listened to tons of podcasts, um, and by the way, I'm gonna include a couple podcasts in the description below. They are packed full of just amazing knowledge passed down by master painters, and it's 
I've binge listened to all of them so many times. <laughs> um, but anyways, so I was at this point where I just felt defeated. I was like, I don't know what else I can be doing to improve besides just taking the time because obviously it all takes time. And I happened to be scrolling on Instagram and I found a little advertisement for a class by one of my all-time favorite artists, Nathan Fawkes, and he was teaching a class on schoolism.com, which is an art learning website, and a lot of it is geared towards like concept artists, but just the fact that I already knew who Nathan was and really admired his work drew me there, <laughs> and I did the self-guided version of his class. And a lot of you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, but it was such an eye-opening experience. Not all of us can afford to go to art school, to take full courses, to spend a ton of money on workshops. So sometimes it really pays off to do the research and find one or two workshops or classes that really, really speak to you personally as an artist who offer a ton of really valuable information and spend the time doing the work. It's extremely motivating to see yourself progress quickly, but it doesn't always happen like that. In my experience, it kind of comes in cycles. So I go through periods of time where I'm growing really, really fast and I'm reaching a lot of goals that I set for myself. I'm able to draw or paint things in a way that I've had, I've dreamed about for a long time. And then other times I am stuck doing the same things over and over again, struggling with the same things. And it really takes a kick in the butt to like get me past that point. So when I found that class by Nathan, I spent a few weeks doing it. I actually repeated it twice and it was so incredibly beneficial because it wasn't just a class like here, copy this and learn this. Nathan took the time to break down how he sees color and light in the landscape and how he translates it to the paper with watercolor and gouache, which is exactly what I like doing. You know, like I love watercolor and gouache and painting outside and, but I was struggling a lot with color. So it's like that concept of give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he can eat for a lifetime. That's the whole point. So after taking his class, I had leveled up my ability to understand color and light in the landscape. And then I could go back to my own self-taught journey, which a lot of times is literally just me going for daily walks, painting every day outside, experimenting, just trying to grow my understanding of the environment and really just teaching myself how to see. And that's something that Nathan talked about a lot in his class is you have to put the hours in outside. You have to do it. There's no way around it. No class is ever going to be able to do it for you. But once I was able to get past a certain hurdle and see color in a certain way, then it made it a lot more motivating to go back and do the work myself outside and repeat that day by day. can be really difficult or even frustrating just finding the learning materials. When you're self-taught, you are self-guided. You don't have someone giving you a syllabus or standing over your shoulder and telling you which direction to go in. So each step is of your own discovery. And to me, that is both thrilling and also kind of scary. And Again, at times it can be difficult to keep the motivation if you are struggling. So another thing that really, really helps me is to be part of a community. And because, you know, lockdown has changed the, a lot of our lives, <laughs> um, that community is online. In my case, it's in Discord, it's on Instagram, it's on in, even in my YouTube comments. And when I do live streams, people come and hang out. So there's a sense of community, although it is kind of scattered across the, the worldwide internet, the world wide web, but it is there. 
And when I talk to people about their struggles, I see how universal so many of our struggles are. And that can be a little uplifting. I mean, it's not like I want everyone to suffer. <laughs> We're all suffering in our own ways. Um, but, you know, it, it just reminds me that I'm not alone. None of us are alone. We all face so many similar struggles. And together, it's a lot more fun to work through those problems, I think. I definitely miss the feeling of being in a studio with other artists who we're all kind of, you know, experimenting and working through our problems and we can bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, so finding an internet community where you can do that is so amazing. I'll put a link to my Discord channel in the description if you guys want to come hang out with us, but there's so many out there. Like there's I actually discovered last year that Reddit has a pretty active art community. And I did try using it for a little while, but I have already I was already so active on a lot of other platforms that I just kind of got burned out on it. <laughs> so maybe someday I'll go back to that. But if you aren't part of any specific community, uh, one really easy way you can connect with other artists is to look for like monthly challenges. For instance, probably one of the most popular one would be Inktober. Pretty much everyone knows what Inktober is. Uh, and there are so many out there. Like every single month, there's a different art challenge. So if you love one particular type of art or medium, maybe there's a challenge that is perfect for you. And by being part of that community challenge, you can find other artists and they can find you. Um, I just, you know, it's one of those really fun ways to be active within a community. Speaking of Inktober and other challenges, if anyone is interested, I'm going to be doing a theme for mine, which is going to be completely landscape focused. So I'm going to be doing value studies, not just black and white. I think I'm also going to include color here and there, but I'll be doing black ink drawing with watercolor, kind of like you see here in this sketch session. But my plan is to not use a pencil at all <laughs> during the month. I'm going to be using pen only to motivate myself to just get over that fear because it is a fear. And the other day I went out painting and I forgot a pencil. I only had a pen and I was like sitting there trying to get myself to just make a mark. I was like, come on, you can do it. Um, I was just like, you know, staring at the page in fear, which is so silly. Uh, and that's actually what motivated me to do this sketch session and to record it and to share it because I'm really trying to get over that fear of uh, messing up, of like, you know, be perfection or whatever, which, oh my gosh, it's so silly when I talk about it out loud. So yeah, anyways, if anyone is interested in joining our little community theme, uh, either come join my Discord chat and you can we can actually have a discussion about it, or keep an eye out on both here on YouTube as well as my Instagram stories, and I will definitely be posting about it. My next tip might be super obvious, but we've all heard the phrase, comparison is the thief of joy. And oh my goodness, is that true with art? <laughs> so one of my biggest pieces of advice, and I still have to actively practice this, uh, is to not compare yourself to any other artist. Unless you have been alongside that artist every single day of your lives and you've taken the exact same steps, the exact same amount of brush miles, <laughs> painted the exact same things, the exact same amount of times, you have no right to compare yourself. And I know we all do it. I definitely do it. Uh, and social media makes it really, really easy to compare yourself to someone else. 
But for the love of hobbits, please stop doing it. It can completely deflate you. Instead, you should look at it with excitement and joy and love and be proud of them and excited for them. And just know that someday, if you continue to put the practice in and the time, and you continue to take an active role in your own learning, that you will get there. And of course, the goal shouldn't be to copy other artists. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that we're pretty much all on social media, right? So that comparison stuff happens in our subconscious. We have to take an active role in pushing it out of our minds. Um, Be happy for other artists, for their success. But keep your eye on the prize. Your prize is going to be different to every other artist's prize. And speaking of comparing yourself, um, one thing that I've learned by listening to hundreds of those podcasts with uh, artist interviews with these master artists is that even after a lifetime of study, artists are still figuring it out. So there's never a point in your life where you know everything and you can do everything perfectly. The crazy thing about art is that it's an elusive goal. As you age, as you grow as a person, your aesthetic changes, your goals change, and your skills are always going to be a little bit behind. But in a way that's really exciting to me anyway, because it means that I'm always going to have something to work towards. It means that I will never, ever be bored for as long as I live. So one thing that might help you stay motivated is to change your mindset of like thinking about art as an end goal and thinking about it as the experience or the joy of learning, the joy of experimentation. For me personally, communing with nature by spending time outside and painting is my biggest driving factor. And that is always pulling me to continue. Like it's pulling me outside with my sketchbook. Even if I have no goal in mind of what I want to paint, I know I can go outside have a good time, put some paint on the paper, and just be in that experience. So instead of wasting time comparing yourself to others, figure out what drives you, what excites you the most. Is it the pure act of creation? Is it seeing the paint flow on the paper? Is it spending time in nature and having a reason to take your sketchbook out? You know, like there's so many things and each of us are going to have a different answer. When I figured mine out, That's when my life really began. So that just about wraps up this sketch session. I hope you guys had fun hanging out with me and maybe got some of your own sketching in. If anyone out there has any advice for how to stay motivated during your self-taught art journey, don't hesitate to start a discussion in the comments. Let us know. It's always really interesting to hear how other artists get through these types of things. All right, everyone, I hope you're staying well. I will see you all again soon.